I know little to nothing about WASM. And so when they asked me to give me the opening, I was like, uh, why? But I am curious. And the way I look at the community at this point in time, I've been through a bunch of hype cycles, quite a few recently. And the interesting thing about hype cycles in the infrastructure world, do you all understand the prize for success? It's being almost irrelevant. If you do a good job with this, no one will talk about it again. It will just be this very stable layer that does what you all are working on, assuming you can get there. Now, as someone who's been observing this space for the last six months or so, I'm asking myself, what is WASM? And what goals do I hear people trying to achieve? Now, depending on who you talk to, there's two or three big domains. There's one domain where you're going to build a new universal computer that makes the choice between Intel, AMD, all the drivers, operating systems, LibC, go away. How many people subscribe to that vision? There's like four hands here, and all of them are on like the WASI steering committee. <laughs> and this is the part that I find the most confusing. Number one, the relationship between all of these components is one of the foundations for advancement in computing. A lot of people have been able to move faster by being able to be independent and simply ship a module that your OS can import and off you go with that custom piece of hardware. If you are successful at that level, what does that mean for innovation and the pace of making this all work? As you all know, global consensus is super hard. But there are some value of having this universal computer. There are people who work in the mobile space that don't think about devices very much. They target the iPhone. Most of them don't really actually program for the extreme differences between different phones. But yet they're able to ship their code to hundreds of millions of people around the world. If you can do that on the back end consistently, that would be amazing. And there's this other side of the spectrum, and they don't like when I describe what their goal is. A modern mainframe. Now that sounds pretty terrible for people that still have to maintain and think about a mainframe. But the idea there would be, and I don't know how many languages you've written code in, but I've gone from Python to Ruby to Golang, and I won't claim a bit of Java, but there was a little of that too. And each of those worlds, I always thought everyone was going to rewrite all the software in the new hottest language that would come out. And what's the first thing that happens when a new programming language shows up? Someone has to write a Postgres driver. Your language isn't legit until there's a native Postgres driver that doesn't require libc. And if you think about this across all programming languages, this is a monumental amount of work for everyone to try to figure out how to rewrite the exact same software over and over again. Now, there's been this promise of libc, and some people have the idea of the component model. The last time I seen this advertised was in the mainframe world, right? Just write your COBOL and let the machine around you do the rest. That is a fantastic end game, assuming the world around you is also stable. Now, it sounds like the perfect time because Object Store, we have pretty stable APIs there. S3, and there's even open source implementations. Things like Postgres have become almost a universal database protocol. Everything from CockroachDB to the open source project or a serverless offering offers this interface. Do we really need a native library for every programming language? Or can the machine provide that abstraction for us and we have a thinner protocol that's easier to implement, maybe even auto-generate? And so there's a vision of WASM. Do we have that path we've been looking for? Can a developer truly write any code in any language and deliver on the promise of Java's write once, run anywhere? I think these are the two big spectrums that you have in front of you. The challenge will be explain it to someone like me. All we want to do is write code. We really don't care if it's ARM or Intel. We want to use the thing that's the most efficient and the thing that works the best. So as you sit here, and maybe you're on the, we will create a brand new universal machine that will replace all and collapse the layers, 
or maybe you're thinking of this universal paths that once and for all, whether you're on-prem or in the cloud, you can just write code the same way. But how do you describe that to someone who doesn't care? Part of the challenge of doing work at this level is giving people a real tangible reason to care. It can be very frustrating. Think about all the issues we have with open SSL. There's a very few handful of people who carry the burden of that work. The one thing I learned from the container wars is that we were fighting each other too early in the process. There was this mindset that the winner would take all. The truth is the winner takes all the burden. You will be stuck trying to maintain the standards on behalf of everyone else. So as we go through the talks today, remember collaboration is gonna be super important because the prize for this is to be this invisible layer underneath that's just doing all of this hard work. At the end of the day, people writing software probably just want to use their favorite language and framework in order to do it. How compatible will you be with that? Or will you require them to rewrite all the software? My guess is anything that requires people to rewrite everything is doomed to fail, almost guaranteed. There is no way that the world's going to stop innovating at the pace we're on, or the world will stop while you re-implement all the lower levels. So it is a time to be excited, but understand what the goal is. Make sure that this thing is usable and has tangible results along the way, or in five years, you'll find that no one cares about this particular level. So it's WASM Day. There's gonna be a lot of amazing talks. How many people contribute to the lower levels of WASM? How many people are using WASM day to day in their production job? How many are just here because it came with the ticket you pay for and there's no other better talk to go to? Wow, the ratio is off big time. And so any of the speakers, no pressure. Your goal was to have these people walk away more excited than they came in and want to contribute and help you all paint a clearer vision of what WASM is supposed to be. Covering that entire spectrum is challenging, but it could be possible as long as the destination is clear. That's my time. Thank you.